Greetings. It's time for another one of my boring little teardown videos. And this time we're looking at this power supply. This is a power supply, it's a 5.1 volt power supply for a Panasonic Lumix. It's 5.1 volts out, 1.1 amps, and it's got this strange connection which looks like a mini USB connector. As you can see the pins are different. It's only got a connection in each side which goes with the corresponding DC connector. It's a bit easier to spot on the side of the camera. I picked this up on eBay for just under a fiver. Uh, I wasn't expecting anything special for five quid and in fact I don't care because I don't need the power supply. What I need is this cable because I need to make a 12 volt adapter for this. So this arrived. This is the model. Now, I'm not going to do a load test on this because as you can see from the schematic I expect it to work fairly well. I expect the output to be pretty close to 5.1 volts because as you can see towards the right of this diagram IC2 is a PJ431A which is a precision voltage reference so it should be pretty much programmed to output exactly 5.1 volts. So I expect it to work to that extent. But I don't particularly want to load test this for another reason and I'll show you that in a second. While we're looking through the schematic you can see it's pretty standard. Um, on the input you've got your supply, then you've got your fuse, then you've got an input capacitor and choke which aren't fitted on this, they've been omitted from the board. In fact there's an output, uh, an additional output capacitor and choke which are missing from the board as well. Which I haven't shown on this diagram, I'll show you in a second on the board itself. Then you've got four diodes as a bridge rectifier, smoothing cap, and then you've got a basic three transistor switch mode power supply design with the transformer and the feedback opto isolator, then a single diode and smoothing cap and a voltage regulator, and Bob's your uncle. So, why don't I want to do a load test of this? Well, basically, I don't trust it. Just take the lid off. It was screwed on by the way and this cable was attached. We'll discard that. Here's the circuit board. Now before I show you the underside of this I'm going to show you what, what Panasonic would do because along with this I also have this one. Now I think this is the power supply from the old tough book that I uh, dismantled and because it was magnesium I couldn't resist it. I set fire to it. This one, you can see, looks a lot more substantial. There's an extra layer of insulation here, and there's this, which I haven't peeled out yet. Let's see what this is. I think it's copper foil shielding. The case is also a lot tougher than this one, it's a lot thicker. This is the Panasonic case, you can see it's quite quite thick plastic. If you compare with the other one, you can see the edge is a lot thinner, it's easier to squeeze that than it is that. This one is approximately two millimeters thick, whereas the Panasonic one is closer to three millimeters thick. I assume the same goes for the the actual thickness of the overall case as well. Anyway, you can see shielding, extra layer of insulation, extra metal shielding on the top as well. This one has nothing of that. Underneath this I expect to find oh, more insulation. Everything's all glued down and here we have an input filter, capacitor and choke. On this one we have a missing input choke and a missing filter capacitor. But okay that means this is going to be relatively noise free. This one is going to be 
rather electrically noisy. That's not why I don't want to plug this in. Incidentally, by the way, this Panasonic power supply is 15 volts at 2.6 amps. This is only 5 volts at 1.1, so this is going to be a this is going to be a chunkier power supply than that one. But we've got this for comparison for a similar size of power supply, similar physical size. To see what you can, what Panasonic will do compared with the manufacturers of this Chinese crap will do. Now here's the input circuitry here. You can see there's a reasonable amount of spacing here between the live parts. There's a spark gap there between the high voltage side and the low voltage side across the auto isolator. And obviously there's going to be some insulation on the the transformer as well. But what I'm looking at here is the connections, the distance between the connections on the the AC side, the actual potential, these are going to be 240 volts across them or 340 volts DC on the uh, on the DC output. Let's take my, take my ruler and as you can see the creepage distance on those tracks is about two millimeters. These middle ones here are going to be the AC inputs or the bridge rectifier. It's about two mil of clearance there. It's a little bit tight, but that's what you'd expect from the bridge rectifier anyway. It's obviously designed for that. And similarly, if I grab this Delta power supply, here's the bridge rectifier. That one's a lot tighter, that's closer to one and a half millimetres between the two tracks. On this board, remember we've got live on the top here, that's neutral. So that means that there's 240 volts AC between this point here, this track, and this track. Separation distance, I'd say that's about two thirds of a millimetre. And that's supposed to withstand 240 volts. If you want to see the boards side by side, here's a nice high res scan of them. Now this is the sort of crap I'd expect if I ordered it from Hong Kong or something like that. But this actually came from a UK supplier. So I'm not going to be blowing this board up. And I'm not going to be chucking it in the bin. I think next week this will go to trading standards for them to take a look at. But if you're thinking about buying if you're thinking about buying one of these cheap power supplies, I'd think again because you certainly wouldn't want to leave one of these unattended. Uh, I don't think there's much of a risk of electric shock from the secondary output. Well, to be fair, it does say on the back, risk of electric shock. I don't think that's what they meant by putting that disclaimer on the back of the case. But I don't think that should be on sale in the UK, so I'll be passing that on to Trading Standards to take a look at. Oh, here's the, the output cap, which is missing, and the the inductor there has been replaced, the diode has been moved to there and looped out so there's no output filter either. Now what I will do though is I'll take this transformer apart. That's it separated from the board. Let's see what we've got. Let's count the tape turns. Oh, I haven't damaged that by the way. That's the insulation 
as is. So that's one, two, three, four, five. About seven, seven and a half turns of kept on there. And here's a close up of the windings. These are all the primary connections. You can see roughly how far away they are from the secondary. Although, granted, this is enameled copper wire, you can see there's not a lot of clearance there. But I'm not sure what the minimum clearance requirement is between enamel conductors. We have a triple secondary winding. Three wires connecting across two terminals. So what was that? That was one, two, nine turns of the secondary. Right, let's see what was insulating between the secondary and the, the inner primary. It's not like capped on this time, it's some waxier tape. It's almost like masking tape. Very much like masking tape. Okay, so we've got One, about a turn and a half of that. Then we've got this. What I assume, I don't know anything about switch mode power supplies. I assume this is like a feedback winding. This is one. Another eight turn winding, same as the secondary. Then we have another layer of this masking tape type stuff. Cheers. One. Put one and a half turns again. And then we have your primary winding, which to be honest looks a bit roughly wound in places. I think I've done a better job than that winding transformers by hand. And that's that's either a hundred or a hundred and one turns wrapped straight on the plastic. So that's the transformer, that's the power supply, would I recommend it? Not a chance in hell. Useful if you need the lead off it, but uh, I wouldn't plug one into the mains. Thanks for watching.